BlackRock is under some fire uh, in Capitol Hill. Uh, the House Select Committee on China now reportedly launching a probe into the world's largest asset manager. Lawmakers alleging the BlackRock is facilitating investment in Chinese companies accused of bolstering China's military and violating human rights. For more, I want to talk to Jay Clayton, who's here uh, at the table, of course, uh, at Apollo, non-executive chair and a CNBC contributor. Good morning. Morning. Okay, so what do you make of this? You've been, you've been somewhat, uh, somewhat, you've been a China hawk. Is that fair to say? That, that is, let's, let's, yes. Let's just go with yes. Just go with yes. Okay, so what do you think is really happening here? Well, this committee, it's a bipartisan committee, which is rare right now. We'll come, we'll come back to what, you know, partisanship has meant for our debt rating. But it's a bipartisan committee. It's not a legislative committee. It's a committee designed to bring out information. And this is one step in bringing out information. Let me, let me take this to just a, a little bit higher level. Yep. We're, we're into the presidential cycle, okay? What are the big issues for... Um, you know, kitchen table Americas in, in, in this cycle. We've got abortion. Okay, put that to the side. We've got the border. Put that to the side. Maybe. Three big ones that all relate to China. Climate. You're not going to solve climate without dealing with China. We can now all accept that. Mm -hmm. okay? The economy, the strength of the dollar, and national security. Those three, those three big ones, all depend on our relationship with China. We talked before about conjoined twins in our economy with China. You know, China's economy doesn't look so good right now. I think one of the headwinds for the U.S. economy is where the China China. Okay, so, but then, what, what are you what are you arguing should happen here? Because well, you've been you've been hawkish, as I as I said, about China, about the national security issues, about some of the co companies and how to deal with them. If we, if we have to act, if we are twins, conjoined twins, mm -hmm. what's that relationship supposed to look like? Well, it's that you can't deal with those things in isolation. You can't deal with national security in isolation from the economy and, you know, climate being a political issue in isolation from. All of the candidates need to be able to deal with those issues in an open forum. This committee, and let's go back to your question right. about MSCI and, and BlackRock, what they're saying is, okay, when I invest in an index, when I invest in a global index, how much of my money is going into the Chinese public capital markets? And where, what is that money going to finance? That's a very good question when those three big issues for Americans all depend on our relationship with China, which is, which what, is not a good one. But then what's the answer? What's the answer? What, we, we just had uh, the regulator on about uh, commodities, and, and specifically we're talking about crypto. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, do you regulate it? Do you not regulate it? How do you regulate it? How do you regulate something that's in another place? Okay, for, for, first thing toward, toward regulation is transparency, right? One of the things that I saw right. Russ, and Russ was saying, what's my biggest frustration with crypto is that I'm not getting transparency onshore and offshore in the, in the gray areas. Right. Transparency on our dealings with China. You can't solve these problems until you understand them. And what's, what's my view? We are too dependent. I think everybody agrees with that. We can't have a sharp decoupling, but we, and our economic strength. I, that's okay. We can't have a sharp decoupling. That's because that's the point I come back to all the time. Mm -hmm. How do you do it gradually? How do you do it softly? And if they're, I mean, like, what's the definition of a sharp decoupling? Because I, I do worry about global security if there is no connection mm -hmm. between the two countries. Because I, I think the Chinese have done a lot of pretty shady and awful things along the way. You watch Oppenheimer and you think, wow. There's a problem with us having no connection to another superpower mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. on the globe. Look, we have, we have, we have I'll, I'll, I'll give Henry Kissinger credit for this. We have, we have something that has never ended well in the past. We have a superpower, the United States, and a rising power. When you have a superpower and a rising power, generally that ends in conflict. Are we going to, to use the phrase we use right. too much, are we going to be able to land the plane of a rising power and a superpower? Right, but then we had Nikki Haley sit, uh, sit at this desk a week ago, and you would have thought that she was prepared to declare war on China. I mean, I, I say this because you know, there's a lot of people who are in Washington today who, I'm, I, you know, they, they are all for the decoupling. Okay, what, what are our assets? What, start with what our assets are to solve this. Economic strength. Okay, we should be focusing on economic strength. We have better relative economic strength right now one of one of the issues is how are we doing going forward? Okay, we have we do have rising right. debt and deficit. But That's in the, what do you make the, of the rhetoric? I'm just curious about the rhetoric piece of this because we because it, it almost feels like it's the U.S. Simple. even more than in China the right now. The rhetoric is too simple. It's too simple. It's too simple. Okay, you know the the this or that. Right. That's that's too simple. We, we, need, we need to continue right. our military strength, we need to continue our economic strength, and we need to diversify. Right. Um, talking about 
rhetoric and also just what's happening in the world, Fitch downgrading um, the United States, what do you think? Um, look, I think if you read the text and you've done a good job playing it out, what, what's their explanation? You know, the, the downgrade in itself gets headlines. What's the explanation? Um, I'll put it in my, in my kind of simple terms. Coming out of the pandemic, we have growth, but debt and deficit are still growing. And the financing of the debt is going to cost more than we thought. Though, those are the takeaways from this, which is, hey, we have to get our act together in the next you know, five, six, seven years. That's unsustainable. Look back 12 months, getting our act together doesn't look so good. That's, that's looking what back I 12 months doesn't look so good? Because I was going to say... Let's look back 20 years. But, but right. looking, look, look, looking back, the no appetite for looking beyond the immediate problem you know, the debt ceiling, no appetite for looking out and saying, what do the projections look like? That's a bad thing. OK. And you know what? The American people, we just talked right. about those three things. We, we don't give them enough credit. The American people can understand that Social Security is unsustainable. Right. Un, un, right. Unless the, the context in which is so interesting is, though, we're in this in the middle of what it will turn into a presidential campaign. You're seeing folks already putting ads out about this. Mm -hmm. And what's so uniquely strange about this is I would have thought if you looked at their model, you would have actually put out this report and done this downgrade three years ago. OK, Let, let's there's there's one. Stat and, so, there. and so there's this sort of uniquely weird thing happening yeah. where there's this perception that somehow it's actually worse today than it was three years ago. And in fact, they would tell you it's not. They would actually tell you it's better today. Well, the, 19, the, the, the um, 2019 numbers were 100 percent on, de on um, deficit to GDP. Uh, you know, now we're at what, 120, and they're, they're projecting going down to 118. It doesn't look like we're getting back to 100 anytime soon. So I'm not, sh I'm not sure it's worth on, worse on, on the debt side. And on the deficit side, the year to year, you know, we're, we're pretty big, 6 percent. That's a big number. 